part of this, I think, is a, is a healthy skepticism about the technology because the, the technology oftentimes is the easy part and we get attracted to bright, shiny new objects. Uh, the challenge with that is that today's bright and shiny object will probably not be the same one tomorrow. Tim Dino is a senior executive with more than 20 years of experience in general management as it relates to technology, professional service and product development initiatives that generate revenue and increase profitability for global companies. Tim is currently the senior advisor for innovation and business strategy at International SOS, the world's most comprehensive 24-hour medical and security assistance response organization. He has extensive experience working and residing overseas while supervising many cross-cultural teams. Well, in terms of definition, I think it can work across multiple levels in an organization. It can be as simple as an existing process or product being re-engineered to embrace technology that wasn't available before. It can be replacing existing processes and products. It can be creating things that are brand new. So it's a pretty broad term, and in a lot of organizations, it's probably a combination of those three. And then uh, the second part of your question, which is around the building blocks. I mean, obviously technology is at the center because that's what's uh, causing us to, to look at these opportunities, but I think equally important are the, the, the sort of skill sets, the managerial skills, and then the cultural changes that are required to be successful. Well, as I said before, we, we tend to sort of start with the technology and look at, you know, what does that enable us to do, but oftentimes we forget that uh, the hardest part of this is how people's behaviors are going to change, whether it's the people producing the new solution or the people consuming it. So I think embracing uh, change, not just uh, from a technology stack perspective, but from an overall perspective is very important. Uh, so I think as an organization, particularly successful organizations, the status quo is the norm. And there's a, a reward system that generally says, be risk adverse, uh, stay with the safe, and I think anytime we're talking about transformation, we have to break out of that. So I think globalization, it's interesting because I think it's not only a challenge, but it's probably also an equally big opportunity. Uh, the challenging part is that you and I may think differently because we grew up in different places and, and look at the world through a different set of eyes, but also if we look at the world as our market and the world as our, our source of inspiration and, and, and essentially the, the components, mm -hmm. then we should be able to embrace you know, the whole world, not just the, uh, the, the safe and the, the familiar that we're, we've grown up with. Well, I think you have to start with the end in mind. And if you, when you go into a transaction, to what extent are you, what are you buying and what do you want? What are you trying to achieve? It, does it require a big cultural re-engineering or can things perhaps re remain somewhat autonomous? And of course those answers will shift over time, but if you start off thinking quite deliberately about the cultural implications of the transaction, um, I think it's a lot easier to, to engineer for success. And we've definitely seen great deals on paper that were executed per, poorly from a cultural perspective um, and with poor results. And then equally mediocre deals, at least up on the outset, that were quite successful because the cultural pieces were well addressed. So it's, uh, it's definitely part of the, the recipe for success. Well, I think the, the irony is that it, it, it has to happen from the bottom up, but I think there can be a, a, a top-down uh, leadership by example. And I think it starts with the senior leadership being open to the possibilities and being curious, mm -hmm. uh, looking outside the four walls at what's going on in the world and trying to, to at least be aware of the possibilities. And I think then it's getting inside the heads of their consumers or the some cases perhaps the internal users. Uh, a lot of the concepts that are embodied in design thinking are really about that empathy for the, for the user or the consumer. And for a lot of senior executives, that, that can be a scary place to go. But the successful programs really require you to do that. Um, another 
key part of this, I think, is a, is a healthy skepticism about the technology because the, the technology oftentimes is the easy part and we get attracted to bright, shiny new objects. Uh, the challenge with that is that today's bright and shiny object will probably not be the same one tomorrow. So I think it's understanding that the technology has a role here, but not to be come uh, seduced by it as the, as the be-all and end-all to the approach. So I think there's the obvious outputs that you can measure. You know, have people adopted this, this, this new uh, technology, this new product, this mm -hmm. new process, whatever it is we've introduced. And that tends to be the comfort zone of managers. But I think if we're looking at the, the change management aspects, the really important pieces of that are around, are around behavior. Mm -hmm. And to what extent we can see tangible signs that behavior is shifting. Uh, one of the things I often look at is how, how do we spend our time in meetings? If the meeting starts and ends with a big discussion about budgets and traditional sort of financial metrics, that would suggest that we're not really looking at a, an agile design thinking centric way of doing things. So uh, our time in meetings, our vocabulary, uh, the reward systems that we use, um, how do we celebrate si success and how do we deal with failure because it's inevitable in this sort of journey that there will be failure. So if we are understanding of that and we're tolerant of that, that should show up in our change management uh, initiative. Thank you, Tim.